Sufficient planning needs to be done. Significant arrangements for observing the shocks that will come with the removal should be done. That the timing should be such that the impacts and consequences would not add to hardships. We all believe in this, and Mr. President leads us in this feeling. We are here today with the um, Minister of Finance because she provides the money for whatever, and the Minister of Petroleum Resources and the GMD and NPC, who are largely in charge of the industry in the public sector. And those who have the stakes, our two very new uh, commission and authority on the upstream and mid and downstream, to look for ways a means of taking, making the necessary plans, taking all the necessary factors into consideration, and finding the best and most suitable time for the removal of petroleum subsidy to take place. In this meeting, of course, what we'll do is an exploratory engagement. This kind of meeting, I'm sure, will continue either with the legislature or on the side of the executive arm of government with major stakeholders looking for ways and means of getting this issue of petroleum subsidy removal finally dealt with appropriately. So there is no mistake when we are saying this is not the time. All of us are in, in the same opinion. All of us. And therefore there is nothing like uh, confusion or lack of uh, understanding within the government cycle. No, 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 no. We are all agreed that the subsidy is abused, and therefore it is a challenge to us as an administration to deal with the abuse, to find appropriate means of stopping the abuse. So I want to, on behalf of the Senate leader and the Deputy Chief Whip, uh, and indeed the entire Senate, welcome the the ministers, the GMD, and other uh, chief executive officers who are here with us. And this meeting, as far as we are concerned, is going to go on. After this one, there could be another one, and another one, and another one, uh, all in such of ways and means of ensuring that that ordinary Nigerian does not suffer any hardship, that when the subsidy will be removed, eventually it will be at such a point at which the hardship will be very minimal and would have been taken care of by several uh, uh, programs or projects or empowerment. And it's not about NLC. NLC, how many people are in the NLC or TUC? We are talking about every Nigerian. And NLC is just an organized part of the system. But we are concerned beyond the NLC. And I'm taking this opportunity to appeal to TUC and NLC to share this uh, plan to, to go on 
on strike or demonstration is totally unnecessary. There is not going to be uh, removal of subsidy. So there, there is no need for this. Please, let's not um, create unnecessary tension where there should be none at all. So I appeal to them using this medium to please forget about this there are 27 deadline because there is no need for any deadline. We are supposed to come together and work assiduously to ensure that our country is stable, that our people enjoy the benefits of uh, uh, government programs and projects that at the end of the day, whatever decision will be taken will be in the best interest of our people protecting the most vulnerable uh, amongst us. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Let me start by stating the fact that we did make a provision in the 2022 budget for fuel subsidy for January to June. And that suggests that from July that there will be no subsidy. And this provision was made sequel to the passage of the Petroleum Industry Act that has made a provision that all products will be deregulated. Subsequent to the passage of the act, we went back and amended the fiscal framework that was submitted to National Assembly to incorporate this demand. But after the bu budget was passed, and we have had consultations with a number of stakeholders, it became clear that the timing is problematic, that practically there is still heightened inflation, and also removal of subsidy will further worsen the situation, thereby imposing more difficulties on the citizens. And Mr. President clearly does not want to do that. So what we have to do now is to um, continue with the discussions that we're making in terms of putting pla in place a number of measures, one of which is the deployment of an alternative to the, C to the PMS, which is a CND that my, my brother and colleague will speak to, and also the real rollout of enhanced refining capacity in the country, including the 650,000 barrels per day Dangote refinery and also the rehabilitation of the four national refineries that have a combined nameplate capacity of 450,000 barrels per day. The increased refining capacity in the country means we will need to import less products. But also, as we're discussing right now within the executive, the possibility of amending the budget, we may need to come back to the National Assembly by way of amendment to make additional provision for first subsidy from uh, July 2022 going forward, or whatever period is agreed is the right uh, timing. So, Your Excellency, Mr. President, um, I just want to put you on notice uh, in, in that in that regard, and um, and also while we are exploring a ways and means through discussions with various stakeholders in the executive, but as well as in the civil society and the labor unions to explore um, ways and means by which we can address this removal in a manner that is graduated and that will have as uh, minimal impact on the citizens as, as possible. So we'll come back to make further amendments on the fiscal framework as well as on the 20, uh, in the 2022 budget. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you for giving us this opportunity uh, to come and resolve issues around the law and around subsidy removal. Thank you very much for taking this uh, leadership. Because as far as I'm concerned, I think this at this point is squarely a legislative issue. The law has been passed, we are all aware, but that no law is cast in stone. It is clear to everyone that it is at this moment in operationalizing the law, not possible within the six month framework that has been provided for in the law. And if that framework, that, that time frame provided for in the law is not feasible, and which has come to us as a result of operationalizing the law, 
then it is also a res legislative responsibility now to see what can be done to extend that time frame so that it can be within the purview of the law. Secondly, the other less legislative uh, issue arising from it is what the Honorable Minister of Finance has also alluded to, the provision for the subsidy that is not there after March. Uh, so these are all legislative issues, and that is why for me, I had to... After June. After June, after June, after June or July, sorry. Uh, so these are all legislative issues, and that's why, frankly, I find it very expedient at this time to thank you very much for rising up to this responsibility and calling us uh, to this table and giving us this chair. It is very clear. It is uh, clear to the blind and uh, uh, audible to the deaf that it is not possible at this time for us to remove the subsidy. Uh, we know that some uh, naysayers, some uh, political people will try to bring, uh, make political capital out of it, but it is not within the contemplation now of this administration to remove subsidy. Um, but of course, if there are legislative uh, enablers that uh, will also ensure that uh, it is within the law, then I think it's a legislative responsibility. And that's why we are very much in the right place to be discussing this matter today. Thank you, Mr. President. We are required by law as the NMPC Limited to be the provider of energy security for this country. And therefore, every requirement of petroleum motor spirit in this country, if nobody else does, it is our responsibility to do by law. Uh, also, it is also at a cost to the Federation. So we are happy to fill this gap, uh, distinguished Senate President. Uh, we'll take it as the requirement of the law that government is asking us to fill that government will do that. Thank you very much. The government is not considering removing uh, subsidy. Uh, but of course, there are some legislative uh, uh, issues that we needed to discuss with the National Assembly. You know that there is a law passed. Yes. Um, and there are some provisions of the law which we need to uh, to tackle and uh, we've been able to sit with the National Assembly and we are fully on the same page but everything boils down to the fact that uh, subsidy removal will not happen. Why? Uh, what, 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 what's wrong with the timing? Can you bring uh, us Because you know when you pass a law you must you, a law is not cast in stone. In implementing the law you now look at you, you now arrive at some impediments to implement the implementation uh, and so we now felt that, look, we need to take out those impediments because before subsidy is removed, we have, there are certain things that need to be put in place to protect the people, to protect the Nigerians. Have we put all those things in place now? We feel that we need some time to be able to put everything in place so that when subsidy is removed, it will have minimal impact on the suffering people. Honourable Minister, before now, uh, subsidy issue has been shrouded in mystery. Even the government, when they came, there was a time they said there was no subsidy at all. Now, with the ongoing issues, it shows that there is subsidy and there is the need to remove subsidy. So, this palliative measure, how long will it last? Well, well, I won't say how long. We are still in the process of putting things together. I told you that we need to put the structure in place to ensure that minimal impact uh, goes to the, uh, it has minimal impact on the suffering Nigerians. And that's what we are still in the process of doing. So I cannot tell you what time yet. But the, 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 the story that I'm, the, no what I'm telling before. you is that there is no subsidy removal on the cards of government as we speak.